Hey, it's Dave. It is me. I'm out on the range, and it is a hot one today. So I'm sweating everywhere. And I got a, a special firearm we're going to go over today. We're going to be shooting the um, M1 carbine. And, uh, well, first, there's a lot I could talk about with the M1 carbine. Um, I'll just say online there's a tons of information about it. The things to understand, I think, that are important to know that this, this firearm has been in service from 1942 to 1973 in the military. That gives a testimony to its durability. shoots a shoots a 30 caliber round it's it's not like super impressive but its firepower is pretty impressive it leaves the muzzle at almost 2,000 feet per second my interaction with the m1 carbine and first let me just say to the side every person who served this country in the military and whatever you did my hats off to you being in the service is a commitment to this country that I'm thankful for that you did uh, and I appreciate it. My experience with the M1 carbine was uh, in the Bureau of Prisons. And back in 19, I think it's 1986, um, you know, I'm a little kid. I'm a kid and, <laughs> and uh, I, uh, 21, I think, 20, 21, 21 maybe. And I go to the, uh, yeah, it's right before my 22nd birthday. So yeah, it's 21. I go in. And I'm doing my two weeks of introduction to the Bureau of Prisons before I start my job back in Federal Prison Industries. And um, I'm learning that, you know, every position within the prison is a correctional officer first. And so those are your responsibilities. And it's a real deal. And um, the last two days of the training, one is spent on the half a day is on the range and half a day is doing um talking about what to do if you have to um, conflict with an inmate, um, giving you some basic ideas. Nothing like super training. That happens at Glencoe in that regard. But it was basics. Uh, but the firearm, you had to qualify or you couldn't, you couldn't hold a position because they might need you on the tower or whatever. And so the weapons you qualified with, I went over this when I was talking about the, um, the revolver, the um, Smith & Wesson Model 64. But uh, this was one of the weapons, the uh, carbine, the M1 carbine. And you had to shoot uh, a group of, I, th I can't remember the number, something within 30, like 20 something, 22 within 30 within the kill range at 100 yards. And so, um, so I get to go out there, it's January and it's sleeting and cold and I'm not having a great, I'm not really enjoying the day a whole lot until I get the opportunity to shoot this rifle. And I'm like, this thing is amazing. So, um, yeah, I fell in love with the M1 carbine at that moment. And I've enjoyed it ever since. Um, it's light. It's accurate. Um, and uh, I'm just super impressed with it. Um, the inventors of this uh, made, a, made a, an incredible firearm. And I can see why it was in service for such a long time. So, anyways, we're going to shoot it today. I've got a variety of targets. All right. So, I've loaded five. Of them. I gotta sit down before I start talking, so you can see me. Not that you want to see me, but I loaded five rounds with each magazine. And uh, so let's see what we can do down tar down range on the on the paper target. So I uh, got some Hostess uh, zebra cakes down there, about 25 yards. 
Yep, zebra cakes. It's hard to find something that's uh, affordable you can shoot these days. Everything's so expensive. So we're going to shoot some zebra cakes, hopefully. 25 yards. Uh, let's see. Yep. Yep. I got one. I know. Blew it apart. We got that one. Yeah, let's see if we can get one more. Yes, that's it. All right. Now we're gonna shoot it at our oatmeal pies and zebra cakes. <clears throat> let's see how well we do. is not uh, so much for being accurate, right Dave? Uh, it's me, not the gun. Don't be hard on the gun. He's an old man. I'm sweaty and uh, having trouble <laughs> holding it. Um, target. It's not me. Oh, not the gun. That blew something apart. That, that was it. All right, we're gonna reload and. All right, so I'm gonna shoot some uh, steel, and uh, I'm gonna follow up on a couple things I said. Um, so look, I put a strap on. I mean, look how light this thing is. Just so light and easy to maneuver while you're carrying it. Just amazing. Again, that's a well thought out firearm. So um, it's got a 18 inch barrel, weighs just over five pounds, like 5.2 pounds. The one I'm shooting is not a military M1 carbine. It's a, uh, it's, I bought it from Auto Ordnance. And, well, they're the manufacturer. I bought it from a store that was selling it. <clears throat> but it's the same specs. So it's, you know, the purists will say it's not a real, it's not real, it's a copy. And I get that, but it's the same specs and so it's a, to me it shoots and feels just like an M1 carbine and uh, and so that's yeah that's part of it I had looked at the military ones and uh, you know they're just almost double the price so I go with the cheaper chicken that's my nature These are not speed exchanges because I'm just not set up for that. So just one pocket to the next. Uh, I don't think I hit them many times. I'm tired of that. Let's see what happens. Start over here.
definitely don't tune in me to see the best shooting in the world. I tell you what, if you want to see some accurate shooters, to go to like Buffalo Outdoors, Paul Harrell, those kind of guys. They're the pros, of course. They have huge YouTube channels, not little, little ones like I do. Let's see. Let me out some hits here. came uh you could get a version called the m2 came out later um well i you know i can't the military guy had a version i should say that's the right way to phrase it called the m2 and it would uh you could go from semi to fully auto that was what the what it did it alternated at a switch so it allowed you to go full auto the m1s uh carbine the m1s are all semi-auto All right, I loaded 10 more. I'm just gonna shoot at that steel target off here to your right. I'm gonna do it standing up and see how good I do. <clears throat> I'm not shooting so well right now. I think it's because I'm tired. And I'm not talking to you. I'm not shooting so well because I think I'm tired, but uh, that's no excuse really. Okay. Anyways, let's see what we can do. Heat wears on you, I'll tell you that. Alright, got that. All right, shooting the M1 carbine. Um, it's a great weapon, I think. Earns its place in military history, but also a big part of the Bureau, Federal Bureau of Prisons history. If you worked there in the 80s and you went into a tower, it's a good chance this was the one of the firearms up there, probably also an M14. Um, yeah. So there you go. It was light, easy to carry. Uh, I think it's a blast to shoot too. So uh, yeah, that's it. Like I say, uh, make kindness your business. Try to do some kind for somebody. It's uh, for me right now, it's time. Time's a hard thing to do kindness, but I try every day. And I'm telling you, if you focus your life on that first, others first, you last, be kind, even if it means turning the other cheek. In the long run, it's better. And does it make you weaker? No. I think it's stronger. I think you're a stronger person. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry I wasn't as accurate as I could be. It is hot out here. No excuse, I guess. Everybody had to shoot in the heat, too. Um, think about what they went through in the Pacific Islands. Oh, it's just amazing. And my heart goes out to them. Oh, what, a, what a great... What a great bunch of Americans who have served this country. But anyways, I get off topic. Um, so, yeah, it's a great firearm. I appreciate the opportunity to have to shoot it. I hope you enjoyed um, coming along with me as I did. Um, so that's it. Dave out.